Starlink has a complete monopoly on satellite internet. I mean, they dominate this sector. They have the satellites. They have a, a constellation of satellites that is so much bigger than anyone else that um, you might as well give them the winning prize and just everyone else stop competing. That's how far their lead is. However, they may have a rival with a different kind of technology that actually in some ways has some massive benefits that Starlink does not have. Imagine a technology that has the persistent eagle eye view of a satellite, but can be landed, serviced, and redeployed like a standard airplane. This is the world of HAPS, high altitude pseudo satellites. For years, we've talked about the edge of space being the next great frontier for clean energy. You know, solar farms in space kind of thing. But today, Germany has officially entered the chat. The German Aerospace Center, or DLR, has just completed a massive series of ground tests for the HAP Alpha. This sort of looks like an airplane or a drone, but it isn't just a drone. It's a 138 kilogram ultralight marathon runner designed to live 12 miles above the earth for weeks at a time. Guys, let's have a look at the engineering miracle that makes a 27 meter wingspan weigh less than two adult humans and why this tech is about to make traditional satellites look prehistoric. Hello, my friends, I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. To fly in the lower stratosphere, you have to fight the laws of physics. At 20 kilometers or about 12 miles high, the air is incredibly thin. To stay aloft at that altitude using only the power of the sun, you need a wing that is massive but essentially weightless. The HAP Alpha features a 27 meter, 88 foot wingspan, which is roughly the same size as a medium sized regional airliner. But here is the kicker. The entire aircraft weighs only 138 kilograms. That's 304 pounds. The wing structure itself, is about 36 to 40 kilos. DLR achieves this using advanced carbon fiber reinforced polymers. Because it's so light, it can maintain surface loadings of less than five kilograms per square meter. And this allows it to fly at extremely low speeds to conserve energy while its solar covered wings harvest every photon from the sun. So it's flying essentially for free. It's a solar powered aircraft. During the day, it powers its motors and charges onboard batteries. At night, it glides on that stored energy until the sun rises again. Now, of course, at this altitude, you're not affected by uh, storms or clouds or anything like that. It is a perpetual motion machine in the sky. If you'd like to book a paid consultation, uh, you can do so. And I'll put a link in the description below if you want advice on what electric car to buy, solar systems, all that kind of stuff, you can do that. DLR just finished its ground roll campaign at the National Experimental Test Center in Kostek. This was the first time the HAP Alpha was tested in its fully assembled form. Because this structure is so delicate and flexible, they had to use a specialized launch trolley and, and tow vehicle just to move it. They weren't just checking if the wheels turned though, they were conducting static vibration tests and ground vibration tests as well. When you have a wing that long and that light, it acts like a giant spring. If it hits the wrong frequency during takeoff, it could vibrate itself into pieces and basically shatter. DLR's engineers use high precision sensors to analyze every flex in the airframe while the aircraft powered itself using only its onboard solar charged systems. They even tested the radio links to ensure that when it's 20 kilometers is up, it only listens to commands from a ground station. Now, why are 16 different German institutes working on this one project, right? Because HAPS or HAPS offer a satellite-like experience without the satellite-like price tag. So currently, right, Really, let's be honest, Starlink, they have a monopoly, a global monopoly. Airplanes, boats, uh, homeowners who can't get broadband internet. 
Uh, they, 95% of them use Starlink now. And Starlink's revenue now is enormous. It has all the satellites. That's the reason why. But here's the thing. This might provide an alternative. This is much cheaper because it doesn't have to be um, shot into space using a rocket. Now, there's three reasons why this is compelling. One is latency. Because these planes are 20 kilometers up in the air instead of 500 kilometers, which is where Starlink satellites are at low Earth orbit, or 35,000 kilometers high at GEO, the signal delay is basically zero. In other words, this is perfect for 5G and 6G communications. In fact, it's, it's got to be quite a bit faster than Starlink Internet, which is already very, very fast. Number two, resolution. A five kilogram camera at 20 kilometers can see far more detail down to 15 centimeter resolution than a camera in low Earth orbit. So satellites like this have a couple of pretty big advantages. Now, recoverability is also another key factor. If a satellite breaks, it's basically space junk and it just floats in space. If the HAP Alpha needs an upgrade, you just land it on its skids, swap out the sensor and send it back up in the air. So it has a, a big advantage in terms of recoverability and upgradability. I mean, eventually they're gonna have new sensors and new tech that they can simply add into these craft and then put them back up in orbit. So the HAP Alpha is designed to carry a five kilogram payload, which includes a modular high resolution camera and a synthetic aperture radar. This allows it to see through clouds and at night making, makes it perfect for monitoring floods, forest fires, or shipping lanes in real time, or terrorists, I guess. The ground tests of these basically flying satellites are done. The data is verified. And now we're going to wait for 2026 to see what happens. Could Starlink have real rivals with this new tech? I think it's possible. The first flight trials, though, will be pretty humble. Low altitude hops, just 150 meters off the ground to establish procedures. But once the ground crew is actually ready, DLR plans to push HAP Alpha into the stratosphere, gradually reaching the 20 kilometer goal. This is the future of Earth observation. Maybe not necessarily a direct rival for Starlink, but it certainly could eventually provide services beyond just what Starlink does. It's cleaner in a way, I guess. It's cheaper, relies, well, doesn't rely on rockets, and it's more flexible than anything else that's been put into orbit so far. And guys, what do you think? Would you rather have a thousand atmospheric satellites like this or a massive constellation of Starlink satellites in space? Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Guys, if you want to install solar panels, a home battery or a home charger, the best way to do this for your situation is to go to the links in the description below and they'll take you to a page where you can compare everyone. So depending on where you, it doesn't matter where you live, a lot of people email me all the time saying, well, what solar system should I get? Who should I go with? What battery should I get? What electric charger should I get? Well, click in the links in the description and you can actually compare all the different choices and find the best deal for you. I'll put that link in the description below. Additionally, there is a battery savings calculator link and also a federal battery rebate calculator I personally have found that I'm not paying for electricity at all, and that's including charging my two electric cars and also running my home power, my home sauna, um, nothing, not paying anything at all. And I think a lot of people are getting misled. They think that getting a battery is not worth it. Actually, I think it is worth it. So those links are in the description below.